Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining me to review the papers is Tunde Kolawale. He's a legal practitioner who's joining us from Lagos State. He's on the phone. Good morning, Mr. Tunde. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, my brother. I mean, my sister. Good morning. Lovely to have Thanks you here. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Okay, so we're going to be starting with the business NG today. And the business NG leads with Kogi, Imo, Edo State, and seven others borrows from CBN to pay salaries. Now, um, we've seen this happen where states go to the CBN and they borrow money. But then you expect that each state should be able to float itself. If you need to pay salaries, each state should be able to generate revenue. I mean, Lagos State is doing that. Lagos State generates revenue. So why do seven or ten states in this case, Kogi, Imo, Edo State, and seven others have to go to the CBN to borrow salaries? Is that right? Is that what we're supposed to be doing? Especially if we are saying we want a progressive economy. Well, uh, there is no doubt about it that um, all the states in the country have enormous potential to be able to sustain themselves. There is no doubt about it. We are blessed with very rich agricultural land, enormous human resources and talent, very, I mean, very, very good weather and water. Though. But the question would be, have all those states laid a basic foundation for economic sustainability? The answer is no. Decades upon decades of dependency on oil and going to Abuja to receive handouts every month have made all the states to become very indolent, lazy. They no longer, they have never developed their potentials for economic sustainability. That must be the reason why you find that when wages are increased, so many of those states uh, are unable to, to really pay whatever staffers they have, uh, either at the local government level or at the state uh, uh, level. It's uh, born out of the infusion or lethargy to really develop their potential and whatever. But we must be very careful. Too many times we want to compare legal states with uh, some of these other states uh, in the country. And uh, that might be like comparing apple with oranges, mm. and oranges uh, with uh, apple. Why do I say this? Lagos State is the home of banking in this country. Lagos State is also the seat of industry. You must also not forget, and Lagos State now has about uh, three seaports where income could be uh, uh, generated. And of course, almost all the federal institutions are not, and even some of those things have the lacing of it in there, where personnel income terms, personnel income tax would uh, be deducted and then sent to, to, to legal states uh, and all that. But that notwithstanding, I still believe that if um, the respective states that uh, appear not to be self-sustaining today, uh, put on their thinking cap and begin to explore, exploit, and expand the enormous, um, the enormous uh, economic sustainability that they are sitting on without realizing it. The state can depend solely on uh, agriculture. Look at Ukraine as a country, for example. The main state of Ukraine is, um, is agriculture. And of course, they have very good schools in there that people go to from all over the world, which attract them. Uh, some income uh, to the country. So this is my take. We must challenge those states that are complaining about increases in wages and their inability not to pay. So please, for God's sake, begin to explore and exploit and expand the economic sustainability, uh, 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 the economic sustainability agenda. You cannot be talking about true federalism like you have said. Yeah. And without taking some of these things into account, they must go pari passo. True federalism is not just on the level of, uh, of the politics, it you also cut across all the different pieces of our life so that all the respective states begin to realize the enormous potential. And they indeed do have enormous, enormous potential. Yeah. I agree with you because, I mean, I, I want to think of Nigeria as a business and you expect that if a business have, um, has, you know, different subsidiaries, each subsidiary should be able to 
just floats itself and then the whole business is is progressing economically so if we're still going to be waiting for handouts like you said going to abuja every month looking for handouts then we're not growing and you just need to look for what you can do where you are so if your state exactly. is good in agriculture you should explore that if your state has good tourism you should explore that even though i know that insecurity can pose as a challenge but we need to start to look for how to generate more revenue instead of waiting for the federal government every single time exactly. yes so let me let me give you one example okay do you know a state like a kitty state and then a uh, kitty state for example let's use this as a kind of a case study can just decide to concentrate on having very good schools in those places mm. like you have to have a parvalola you could also have some primary secondary school that are very very good world standards that people will begin from all over the country and from different parts of the world Wanted to go to some of those schools and then to go to. And when you have schools that are attracting people from all over the country, from all over the world and whatever, that is, uh, that is uh, uh, tourism uh, which attracts a lot of, uh, of, 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 uh, of uh, income. Houses would sell, those who make bread would sell, those who do, do bottle water would sell, and then those who produce educational materials would sell. So you can have that kind of, uh, of unique yes. way of sustaining. The different states, mm -hmm. uh, just like you have pointed out, agriculture is also a very good one. Yeah, I agree with you 100% because, I mean, if you look at the UK, we mirror the United Kingdom, and what is their main source of revenue is education. So what are we exactly. doing? And I know that, you know, in the past, University of Ibadan was one of the best schools and people from different African countries will come here to study. Um, so exactly. it's something that we can start to look because a lot of times we're fixated on crude and saying we need crude oil, we need crude oil, and that's the way we make our money. But look <laughs> at this. You can't, you can't depend on one source. Exactly. Look at a country like Saudi Arabia that produces uh, more crude, that have more money from crude oil. Look at what they're doing. They also earn enormous, I mean, a lot of money from toll, from large people going to Mecca. Yes. And women on a yearly basis, which in a way could be described as tourism. Look at what they are now doing. They are developing their football. They are mm -hmm. developing their sports. They are also into fashion now. Because they are seen as sooner than later, this money from Kuwait will, 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 uh, uh, will dry out. And if they have not diversified the economy, they will be in trouble. I also look at Dubai, UAE, and some of those Arab countries. Basically, they're sustaining themselves now on tourism and sports, entertainment mm. generally. Mm. All right, let's move over to another headline. It says, stamp duty, how court bars CBN from disbursing trillions collected by DMBs. That's the debt um, management. So, but there's a small headline at the bottom that says, Nigeria's debt rises by 9.43% trillion naira in three months to 9.7 um three trillion naira 9.734 97.34 um trillion naira what do you have to say about this our debt profile keeps rising every other day or every other month um you when president tinubu assumed office he said you know no more borrowing and we're going to try to generate revenue for the country but you're seeing that our debt profile keeps rising every single time and we're seeing this from 9.43 trillion naira in three months to 9 point to 97 rather um 0.34 trillion what do you think about this that's a lot that's well, a huge that, you know, margin that, that's money coming from some duty you said I mean no, 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 that's Nigeria's debt profile. But then for the oh, stamp okay. duty, okay. Um, the court has barred the CBN. Um, well, it's a very, very complicated issue. I'm very, very sad. Uh, why do I say that uh, despite all the efforts that we are making, we still have the enormous or a very, very huge debt, both internally to local contractors, uh, artisans, and suppliers, and also, of course, to international uh, uh, creditors. The collector, when uh, Obasanjo was in there, he went out in there and brought in Kondo, uh, Uyala, Soludu, and a few of them. And then they sat down and worked mad the strategy. Whereby they will approach all the creditors and all that. They got a debt to relief from some, and then they were able to pay some. And then they put us on a clean plate. Uh, all the debts were wiped, and then the country now began to, to, to move forward. But suddenly, after the man left, the pay, those who came in after him, didn't sustain that uh, economic, I mean, didn't sustain that uh, debt-free uh, portfolio uh, for the country, and then they began to, uh, to, to, to 
acquire more, more, more debt. All over it. For me, it's a physical indiscipline. It's responsible for all of these things. Because, like I always say, when you look at uh, on an annual basis, only about 30% of what we budget for actually go into financing what those some various sums of money are budgeted for. The remaining one either go into wastages, they either go into paying allowance and monuments to politicians, or they go into contract inflation, or they go into to, 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 uh, all this jumbo of billions of naira contracts that we 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 we, we, we award on a daily basis. Nigeria is about about the only country in the world to get that care. Contracts are no more denominated or awarded in millions or even in thousands. They now award those contracts in billions of naira. Mm. Yeah, that's the basic improve for executing some of those contra contracts, especially road construction. Most of the basic materials for road construction, about 85% of it coming from Nigeria, uh, here, sand, cement, uh, and water, and clay, and all that. So you will not expect that the cost of a contract, especially road contract in Nigeria, should, should be uh, that high. So this is where the money is going. And this is where we are tracking all this on uh, unnecessary. A debt uh, uh, to our friend, which ordinarily should not be. So, if you are going to be free from debt and then uh, begin to move forward from all that, we must, or this government must embrace what I would call or describe as physical discipline. Physical discipline. We must ensure uh, that um, uh, we maintain a lot of discipline in that area. And how do we do that? Cut down the cost of governance, cut down the cost of contract, and then begin to use. Only those things that we produce in here, it is only those things that we cannot produce. And that's going to have a multiplier effect in growing the economy that we should be, begin to import them from abroad. We still import a lot of detergent, a lot of bleaching cream. We import them a lot of uh, uh, resources. We import a lot of uh, uh, jackets and what have you. Some of those things like jackets and shirts and all that. These are things that can be made in Naba. But we travel as far back, talking as to go as that bringing in those things in the country. So, we just must, if you are going to be growing the economy and going to be free of debt and all that, you must begin to grow the economy and be self-reliant. Use only those things that uh, are produced in the country, especially if you are in public office, if you are a civil server. For me, it is an attempt for such person to be proud or to be using things that are not produced in the country. It is doable. Nigeria's debt can be repaid within one year and all that. If only we are ready to maintain a physical uh, discipline. Look at the very cool that the legislators imported from abroad. And mm -hmm. all that. If they had approached uh, somebody like in the same motor, and some of the very cool manufacturing plants are uh, in Kaduna, or the ones in Lagos to produce those vehicles for them, and all that. they would have put food on our table. The hard currency that was used to import those vehicles would have flown out of the country. And of course, too, you are growing the economy and also expanding, increasing, and equipping the same motor. And some of these other motor vehicle plants in the country, you are equipping them with technicality, you are equipping them with skill, you are also helping them to expand their different markets uh, all over Nigeria. And, different parts. and by the time you begin to use those vehicles and all that, a lot of improvement on a daily basis to begin to go cool to those vehicles and other parts. We don't do that. And that's why we continue to incur uh, uh, this debt that we have. On. Of course, don't forget to, uh, medical tourism is there. Of course, a lot of our children now travel abroad for the education, mm -hmm. and those things don't come cheap. They all depend on foreign exchange and end currencies uh, to be able to get to those places. Look at the human air, the natural air that uh, you most ladies are now very familiar with. <laughs> if you go to the CPNU and make inquiry as regards the huge amount of hard currency that uh, the that is now used to import the uh, human air yeah. and then the bleaching creams and all that, you will be shocked. So mm -hmm. this is uh, for me it's in discipline. So we spend that currency on such frivolous things. Yeah. I think we just really need to look inwards, um, look at what we have, and try to buy Ninja to grow the Naira. I think it was being said exactly. at some point, mm -hmm. yes. Buy Ninja to grow the Naira. Anyways, let's move over to another one. This says CBN raises benchmark NPR by 200 basis points to 24.75%. So um, this used to be about 22.75%, but it has been increased um, to 24. And this is like the second in just over a month. This is the second hike mm -hmm. in over a month. What do you think about this one? Well, I think uh, it's a uh a monetary policy, a way to really cut down 
uh, or tail inflation that we have all over the country. You know, with those increases and all that, the liquidity in the banking sector and some of these other places is going to be reduced. And when it is reduced and all that, as not much money, the money in circulation is, I mean, will consequentially also reduce and what happens. That will have a multiplier effect on bringing down inflation all over the country. So uh, we should uh, not um, kind of uh, discourage uh, the, the CPA from doing whatever is necessary to tame inflation and reduce the, uh, the galloping inflation and price of goods and services that is presently going on uh, in the country. But again, the CPA also has to be careful. I think about last week, uh, it was reported in some of the media that uh, most of our banks are going to the CBN to borrow money uh, in order to be able to meet their liquidity needs and, and all that. And that the sums of money, the bigger sums of money that those uh, commercial banks are borrowed from the CBN are now running to trillions of naira. So when you increase the uh, MSP or whatever they call it and all that, and then uh, the, the, the banks are squeezed, uh, are further squeezed and all that, the consequences could be that they might not be able to meet their obligation to their respective customers and what happens. And when they don't, when they are able to do that, the people will panic. They will think that the banks are no longer uh, a liquid. And then they may begin to run, I mean, rush those banks to take out their money. And when they take out their money and what happens, it could lead to the collapse of those banks. And when the banks collapse, mm -hmm. whatever monetary policies you have, uh, have been thinking with and all that, they will also equally be jeopardized. So, the CBN is working in a very tight rope and all that. We just hope and pray that a lot of wisdom, a lot of diligence, a lot of um, a carefulness will go into some of these financial engineering that the CPA has been doing since uh, Cardoso has owned the office. Mm. Well, I mean, economics is a very, it can be very dicey. And I just hope that exactly. the CBN is doing everything they can to ensure that they, they curb inflation. Because if you even move over to the punch, there's a small headline that says 24.75 interest rate. OPS, which is the organized private sector, fears higher inflation, massive job cuts. So we just hope that, you know, this doesn't just move over to even higher inflation, whatever they can do to just ensure that we're, we're good economically, that, that would be great. Anyways, I want to stay on the punch now. So the major headline on this one says, CBN, EFCC, Pro Banks, Firms Over Alleged Forex Racketeering. The writers here says CBN implements um, De Deloitte FX audit report. EFCC may summon CEOs over $2.4 billion in valid requests. Um, another one says several FX requests fraudulent, made with invalid illegal documents, Cardoso insists. What do you think about all of this? Forex Rocketeering, um, I'm sure that also have an effect in our economy, and especially for the fact that we need Forex for almost everything that we do, because like you rightly said earlier, we import a lot of things. So we're now seeing about $2.4 um, $2 billion in valid requests. That's a huge number. How did they even pass through? How were they able to get all of this? I have so many questions. But then, what do you think about this story? Hmm. It's, uh, we are uh, very unique people on earth. We are about the only people in the world that uh, uh, cut their own losses uh, in order to spike themselves. Of course, when you do the kind of racketeering that we see with regard to foreign exchange, you don't need to be a business, you don't need to be an economist uh, or a banker to know that it's going to have very spiral and consequential effects on the economy as a whole. So, and uh, a decent person, a decent I like, will not embark on uh, that kind of road to destroy his own nation or our own nation or a country's uh, uh, economy, the way we have uh, seen them on here. Tragically, too, we even allow people to come from abroad now to start manipulating our foreign exchange uh, uh, market. Uh, what happened? Uh, an example is the Biasma, which we were told uh, has been arrested and that uh, he was put under house arrest and uh, allegedly uh, he was uh, tinkering with. Uh, Nigeria's uh, foreign exchange uh, market. He is said to have uh, disappeared into China. Well, we trust the security people that wherever he may be, they will bring him back uh, into the country. But the truth of the matter is that, uh, and which we must be honest with ourselves, some of these things that we see happening in those areas and all that are created by the Nigerian airline. It is not you and I that create those problems and all that. It is the people in the banking sector, it is the people in the CPA. 
which is the people in government who are responsible for some of these things. A president you know, who would have to, spe to step on a lot of tools or some huge tools to be able to really uh, get hold of that uh, sector of the economy and ensure that things are properly straightened out and done in that area. For the ESCC chairman, honestly, I don't envy him. These are very, very difficult times. Also, the CBN government. When you look at the debate in the social media, in the in our radio, on television, and the newspapers and all that, the debate is focused basically on the CBN government and also, and also the ESCC chairman. And of course, too, Mr. President, as regards the same will forward with this uh, uh, economy. We are as people at our own level as an individual and what have you. There are a lot that we could do to really be able to get this economy to become a performing economy, to become a manufacturing economy uh, and what have you. So, uh, I also hope that this heavy burden that we are piling on the, on the ESCC, that uh, we will not break the ESCC neck, or that the ESCC itself will not collapse over the huge um, over the huge burden that we are placing on it as an institution, we expect the ESCC to police about 200 million people, police the banking sector, police the manufacturing sector, police the civil servants and what else. I agree there is a special problem in the Nigerian police. I agree that the ICPC and all that. But you not believe it that uh, given the size of the country and the, 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 the huge economy that uh, we have in our hands and all that, those three agencies might not even be enough to... to, to to, to, to cover, to deal with some of the issues that we are raising. That's when we must be thinking again of uh, uh, putting technology into display. Look at the single treasury policy that uh, Jonathan came up with. That has helped a lot. And then look at the program that uh, the Minister of Internal Affairs has come up with, in which uh, you can now apply for passport online, pay through some bank without any interaction with any custom official, with any immigration and all that. Some of those things, if we are able to multiply them, if we are able to do it in some of these areas of the economy and all that, thank God do the chairman of the Federal Civil Service Commission has also come out with a program and I think that application to, to be I mean to be employed with the civil service is not going to be done online. Nobody is going to be submitting a, a physical uh, paper uh, to apply or be interacting uh, uh, with any government officials and all that. So those things are really going to help the country. Just like it has helped jam. Continent technology has helped jump to, to reshape uh, 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 things in that area. And also the narrative of Obama and Pakistan. So when people want to enter investing and practically reduce. These are some of the things that I think we could do as a nation and an institution. Not relying just on the EFCC alone, the, the special fraud unit, the ICPC, or even the central bank government. Those ones are already carrying enormous and enormous body on their heads. And that's all we should not contribute more in such a manner that uh, we break their spinal cords. <laughs> yes, they break their spinal cord. <laughs> okay, so um, staying on the punch, I want to take, let's move over to some security matters. And this one says, Un unemployment responsible for rising banditry kidnapping. And that was by former President Olusegun Obasanjo. Now, he was at a conference and um, he was talking about unemployment. In fact, he was even talking about food security um, and how we waste, I think, 40% of our food. There was a lot that he said in that, in that conference. But one thing that was highlighted was the fact that he said unemployment is responsible for rising banditry and kidnapping. Now, I think it would take a blind man to say maybe not, but I want to get your take on this one. What are your thoughts? Do you think he's right with this statement? <clears throat> um, he's spot on well, pretty much. Uh, President Obama is a man uh, full of wisdom. He has also been there three, three times, military head of state, and then president elected two times uh, as president. Eight years in there and all that. So when the man comes out to speak, uh, given his experience, given his age and what have you, Given his exposure, we should not discountenance whatever he says and all that. In addition to that, we want to add that, uh, just like you yourself are right to say, you don't need a suit here to be able to say that, look, unemployment in this country is contributing to both rural and urban banditry that we have uh, in our hands and all that. And why do we say this? You read both the Bible and the Quran, and then you see in there where it is said that uh, the devil who always find job for a high to one. When children who are well educated, when children who are exposed in terms of technology, cutting out technology 
when children who think uh, whose parents are not getting their salaries as are going to be and other are left to their own device, they are left at all and all that. Chances are that they will take to criminality uh, and war as well. And uh, look at the northern part of the country too. Lack of education uh, is also part of it. In those days when you go, go to school, you will learn uh, some arts, you will learn some trade to be able to sustain yourself and war as well. But all those trades and all that too are no longer available simply because the population is swelling on a daily basis and then the opportunity to be able to play and then deploy your skill to, 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 to trade are also shrinking on a daily basis. So it's a cocktail of program that we must put in place for us to be able to give our children uh, jobs so that they will not begin to engage in criminality such as we have seen. Look at the hypothesis. I think it was, uh, I've forgotten the economists who once said that, look, there should be no problem, there is no country how to be faced with the challenges of unemployment. That sometimes you may even employ people, eh? you may even employ people to be digging holes and then you're filling it back. And on a monthly basis, you pay them salary for doing that kind of thing. Very routine, if not uh, a job that doesn't have much value to society. Just to keep the people busy. Mm. I think that is the direction we should uh, go. Of course, there has to be more situation too, because um, it's difficult. For example, you can't go to court and say, look, I went out there to steal. Because I was hungry, they caught to find us at uh, such, such, such a thing. It's not a good alibi, it's not a good defense uh, in the eyes of the court. I think that extent we must educate the people, uh, more situation to our children, and look, take it to banditry, take it to armed robbery, take it to stealing. It's not a solution, it's not an alternative to people being uh, unemployed. Because you see, finally, in spite of the hard, uh, uh, I mean, lack of space, in the blue uh, color sector of the economy for employment. There are still a lot of things that people can I am aware that a lot of families want um, I may have opportunity for people to be able to do their laundry. A lot of people want somebody or somewhere to come in early in the morning, clean their homes and all that, and then at the end of the day they get uh, paid for it. A lot of people when they park their car in the parking lot and all that, if you if you stay around those places and you help them Clean up their car before they come back. By the time they come back, they will tip you or give you some stipend for the jobs you have done, which in law they call it a country uh, merit or whatever. And all that. So, uh, both as individuals and then the level of government, we must find creative way of usefully engaging our children so that they don't take to banditry, whether in the rural area or in the, or in the urban uh, centers that we have all over the country. It is getting out of hand. Every day people have been um, uh, kidnapped. There were 200 and something school children recently and other very, very basic and very, very audacious uh, uh, the criminality are uh, going all over the country. And these people are no longer having respect for the law enforcement agencies and what happened. Killing of soldiers in the Delta State, mainly a killing of uh, soldiers in River State, in Kaduna, in Abuja, killing of policemen and other. These are very, very serious or uh, enough crimes that ordinarily shootings uh, have taken place if the children are not being. Uh, uh, wrongly uh, 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 educated. And of course, too, there's a perpetual influence of drug addiction uh, all over the country today. Mm. All manners of drugs are coming into the country, and our children are just lapping up all these things. Because when you find out, when you interact with criminals uh, and all that, you find out that before they begin to go to the field or to apply their trade, they will first lay themselves in the cocktail of, uh, of a drug that, stupi that, stupi that stupefies them. And then make them uh, insular to their environment. They no longer know what they are doing. So we must also cut uh, 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 the drug supply chain yeah. uh, that we have uh, all over the country. If we're able to look at these different uh, or put in place all these different perspectives of solving on a problem in the country, we might be seeing the way out of the dark channel uh, tunnel. I, I love what you've said and all of the um, measures that you've asked to be put in place. And honestly, I think there should be some form of advocacy, especially with the drug issue, because a lot of young people, in fact, people in universities, there's, a, there's drug abuse in Nigeria, and people are not really talking about that. And so 
employment we need to engage you know all of these youths because an idle man is a devil's workshop so if we engage them better if they have things that they are doing then they would not look into um, stuff like kidnapping and banditry um, and what have you anyway so let's do stay on this whole kidnapping issue if we move over to the daily trust um well, the leading headline here says 60 hours after Koriga students yet to reunite, reunite with families. But the headline I really want to take is the one at the top. And it says we must treat kidnappers as terrorists. And that is being said by um, President Tinubu. At this point, we've had cases where, you know, they say some people are funding this whole kidnapping business. And we've not seen cases, we've heard those cases, but we've not seen any case where they are being um, prosecuted. Now, if the president say we must treat kidnappers as terrorists, why are we not seeing um, people facing the wrath of the law? So who are these kidnappers? How, why are we not tracking them down? Why are we not, you know, trying to make sure that the lives and properties of Nigerians are being secured? So what are we doing to just even curtail or curb insurgency, kidnapping, banditry, um, and making sure that we have a better, a better country for everyone in Nigeria? Uh, that's a very uh, good question. And no doubt, but what I would say, just like uh, Abena said, we must never forget that Nigeria is a very, very good country. It's a very, very uh, expansive uh, uh, landmark. We are also said to be about 200 million people and war ago. If you have to police 200 million people and you want to call banditry, kidnapping, and all manners of criminality that are going uh, on in the country and all that, we probably will want to uh, employ more security people, uh, the police, the army, the soldiers, and war ago. We also probably would have to create a different type of uh, uh, structures to be able to police the country, such as having local government police, such as having uh, uh, state police, and then retaining the, 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 the federal police. And of course, uh, the present government is moving in the right direction. They say they now want to create marine police. They also want to create a forest uh, gap who will police the different uh, forests and without the uh, all over the country. And some of these things would uh, help to alleviate or reduce the incentives of criminality, banditry, and kidnapping that we have uh, uh, all, over the, uh, all over the country and whatever. But then, I will still want to suggest that uh, education, uh, just like the government, I will want to say, when we send our own children abroad to have the best of education in Naba, Cambridge, and whatever, and we refuse to educate the children of the ordinary man, the children of the poor people, the children in the rural areas, and all that. Those children in the rural area will not allow our own children who have come back from Harvard, who have come back from Cambridge, who have come back from Mavacosa and all that, to be able to live a comfortable life, to be able to, to sleep with both eyes or with their two eyes uh, closed. That is all we are seeing in the country today. Uh, the Fulani boy who is a Riani cattle or driving his cattle from Sokoto to Potakot on foot and all that. When you are going your Pajero Jeep, when you are going your, your bulletproof, uh, the Mercedes Benz, and he sees you, he sees it, and all that. And he will be one. Why can't he also uh, be committing a ram in that kind of uh, luxurious vehicles and, uh, and war as well? Uh, he can't do that simply because we haven't given the right education for people to do all of that. So the challenges will come in. The children that we are refused to educate are not the ones that we are giving us problems and all that. And sometimes when we educate them, we, did, we didn't give them the correct moral situation to be able to live a decent life and then a decent uh, 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 living and work out there. And of course, too, um, I would want to advise that uh, all over the country, we need to make education free to certain levels. Maybe from primary school up to secondary school level. University for me is not compulsory. And where it is compulsory, you can decide to do it anytime uh, you feel like doing it. You can also do it while working. So if we are able to make uh, uh, secondary, primary school free up to that level, only the tertiary institutions are places that people would have to pay, that will also solve a lot of the, of the problems. And, all. and of course, too, regular payment of salary. How much is this salary that we're looking at? How much is it that we pay uh, all these federal workers, all these state workers, and all these local government workers? That we again will not be paying them those salaries at our end too. And we always forget that when you don't pay people salary and their pensions are going to, they have dependence, dependence at all. They have children, they have wives, they have relations and all that, and they are taking care of and all that. For God's sake, 
it's uh, in my humble opinion, it's uh, a sin against God and a sin against man. When you don't pay people their salary as I went to, as at the time they should be paid and all that. And you are inviting criminality, you are inviting them to engage in criminal behaviors and what. A civil servant, for example, who is not being paid the salary for two, three months and other, will not hesitate to start extorting money from people he has to render services to as a civil servant in respective offices or in respective places that um, uh, he might uh, uh, be working. So all these things would have to go together. You cannot fight corruption by just merely arresting people and uh, uh, taking them to court and trying them and putting them in prisons and what have you. Or even sometimes I try to keep them. A cocktail of program will have to be put in place to be able to arrest corruption, uh, rein in unemployment, cause inflation and what have you. And if the leadership at both the local government level, at both the state level and both the federal level and all that, will start with themselves, starting their own best and also show good examples and all that. Nigerians are not difficult people. They, 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 they're not mad people. They are not people who don't have service and all that. If they see that very good vice, very good examples, and very good prison has been laid right at the very top of what happened, I am sure they will follow soon. And uh, let me point this out without being uh, uh, too patronizing. I have noticed these days that uh, when the president is uh, going outside the country, he wears those simple things that are made in Nigeria and what happens. If all the other ministers, if all the other governors, if all the commissioners and what have, if all the other top civil servants, we begin to emulate those examples from Mr. Petty and all that, then they will be stimulating the economy. Production in the area of clothing, in the area of shoes, in the area of uh, cars and what have mm. Then uh, we begin to, 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 to expand. Uh, this is not, um, uh, you don't need a magic one to be able to do some of these things. Very, very simple things that will have multiply effect on the buoyant economy or to make the Nigerian economy buoyant once again. Before we wrap it up, this is the last one. And there's a small headline that says Nigeria receives 15 billion yen agricultural support from Japan. What do you think about this story before we wrap it up? Please repeat that again just quickly. Nigeria receives 15 billion yen agricultural support from Japan. Yes. What impact is this going to have in our agricultural sector? And for some well, reason, it makes me feel like we're just getting handouts. Part, today is Kumato is dead. Okay. Uh, usually it is in the rural areas that people farm. And if you also look, if you have been living in Lego for the past 30 years or just about, you take places like Osoki and some of these marsh areas in uh, Amokoko, in Badia and all that, you will see different people by those uh, swampy areas, mm -hmm. planting tomatoes, planting onions, planting some more from other things and other. I no longer see much of that too. Then you also go to the rural area, it is the farm, I mean, it is the people in their 70s and 80s that now go to do farming and what have The young people think farming is no longer cheap, it is no longer, uh, it's dirty. It's mm -hmm. not something they want to do. So as soon as they leave school, they migrate to the urban area. So you must find a way to really attract people back to the, to, 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 to farm in both the city centers and also in the rural area. And one of the ways by doing this to really go back to the local government, equip the local government with farming, with farming machinery, that the people in the local government area can go and borrow or pay a little stipend to be able to use. You must resuscitate all the agricultural institutes uh, uh, once again, and then the essential programs. Uh, thank God not too long ago, too, I read in the papers that Mr. President is saying that uh, they might be buying tractors and distributing to the respective uh, the local government in the country and what have you. And of course, agricultural research institutes, most of them are dead. When you go in there now, they are in shadow of themselves. We must uh, bring back our life again. We must stimulate life hmm, to those uh, agricultural research institutes once again. Because they provide improved seedling, new farming methods and what have you. Uh, also, this program for the farmers in the different uh, uh, places in the local government and all that. If we are able to do some of these things and able to cut down uh, the insecurity in the rural areas because uh, no matter how busy programs or master plan you may have for agriculture, and people can still not access their land. They cannot access the farms and what have Those programs will come to naught. So, while we are taking security in the rural areas, you must also begin to attack very able hands into All the right. agricultural sector. 
All right. Thank you so much. Um, it's amazing having a conversation with you. Thank you for reviewing the papers with me, Mr. Tunde. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Do have a lovely day. It's been you a too. pleasure sharing this platform with you. Thank you so much. All right, so we've been speaking with Tunde Kolawale, he's a legal practitioner who was joining us on the phone here in Lagos State. And we're just reviewing the papers, um, talking about economic security um, and all of the stories making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. Please stay with us.